Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Kristen Britton, The Green Rider. And it's just called Green Rider, not The Green Rider. Green Rider, Kristen Britton, came out in 1998. Now, the cover... We always review the covers because, you know, I love graphic design and cover art. This is a great cover illustration by the um, great Dungeons and Dragons artist, Keith Parkinson. Now, he's got these great stuff going on in the background, this horseman back here. The great landscape with the aspen trees and the birch trees. This is just a great, magnificent painting. I love Keith Parkinson's work. Uh, he came in, he got famous with the Dungeons and Dragons. He, um, he stopped to, uh, working at, at Dungeons and Dragons, went to freelance, and he did a lot of, a lot of, of, he did all of the Terry Goodkind sort of truth books. He did most of the Terry Brooks Shannara books. So he's got a good track record of a lot of great, great cover art. And he, he could have went on to become a great landscape painter too, which I think was his goal, but sadly he passed away at a very young age. So, you know, a moment of silence for Keith Parkinson, the great illustrator. Now, anyway, Kristen Britton, I know she's one of my Facebook friends. We talk often on Facebook. Um, I like Kristen Britton because just like me, I I work for the state and I'm employed by the government as a, you know, I teach uh, life skills to the inmates at the Utah State Prison. I'm involved in law enforcement a lot. Well, so is Kristen Britton. She has a regular day job just like I do. And that is she is a park ranger up in Maine, I think Acadia National Park. I'm not sure. I also have a feeling that she may have done some park rangering in Arizona, but I could be way off about that. But anyway, she is a full-time park ranger and a full-time writer, just like me, full-time law enforcement, full-time writer. We have that connection. I dig that. What is this about, Green Rider? Um, starts out, you know, this is kind of a throw throwback to some real early 70s 1980s fantasy. I mean, this is like this is like really um let me explain it. So it starts out with um the gray man and he's sort of his birth in the forest and he's sort of our dark lord, right? And he's carries around black arrows. That's the prologue. Chapter 1, we get Kerrigan. She's a young lady. She's running away from school. She's just in the forest alone. A green rider. Now the green riders are this group of sort of fighters slash message carriers that um, are known throughout the land as delivering messages, but also being very competent in their military skills. Um, so a green rider approaches her in the forest and um, he's injured. He's got black arrows. He's been shot with black arrows, you know, the same black arrows from the prologue in The Gray Man, right? Well, the writer, um, he runs across Kerrigan and he um, gives her a satchel. Says, I'm dying. You need to take my horse and this satchel and get it to King Zachary uh, because I'm a green rider. I'm not going to make it. You are, I'm now giving, I'm now bestowing upon you the mantle of a green rider. You have to take my horse, do this journey for me. And then he also gives her a brooch. That she hangs around her neck. And so she's like, uh, and then and then his last words are, beware the shadow man. And so then she takes this horse, a very disagreeable horse, by the way. I really enjoyed the interplay between Kerrigan and this horse that she's not familiar with. And the horse clearly doesn't want her around. It's it's pretty, it's, it's, it's very classic, very classically done, very wonderfully done. Very, reminded me a lot of some stuff from Lady Hawk, if you remember that uh, movie. Anyway, um, she goes off on this adventure. She's running away from school. She's making her way back home. But then she gets wrapped up in this other adventure, delivering this satchel with a message in it. And given a magical brooch, which she doesn't realize, turns her invisible, much like the One Ring turned Frodo invisible um, in the Lord of the Rings, and much like my ta one, my Lord of the Rings tattoo turns me invisible to 
um, all really hot women. That joke never gets old. Never gets old. Anyway, so let's talk about what happens on the journey. This is this reminds this is a mashup. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. This is a mashup between, I would say, Lloyd Alexander's uh, Pride and Con Chronicles, um, Harry Potter, and Lord of the Rings. The reason I say those three is because it's got this sort of young adultish feel to it. Yet it's got this epic scale to it, like um, Lord of the Rings. And um, one of the first things on her adventure on the horse, one of the first things she comes across is the House of the Seven Chimneys, which um, is sort of like a, a nod, I think, to in the Fellowship of the Ring when Frodo, Pippin, Mary, and Sam go to Tom Bombadil's house. Because the House of the Seven Chimneys is full of some uh, characters that are very Tom Bombadil-esque. They sort of are know-it-alls, but yet there's something behind everything they're saying. And I think that this kind of a nod to the Lord of the Rings, having that in there. And then um, then, and then, and from there, the, the, the story branches out and she starts to meet people and things like that that I don't want to give away because that will give plot spoilers. But let's just say she makes it to her destination. Things get scary and hard and weird and the quest becomes all that more involved. Because now she's the possessor of this uh, brooch, the mantle of the Green Rider, and the horse, and um, the satchel with the secret message that she has not read, which is part of the um, mystery of the plot. And um, the thing I love about this book, the thing that I loved about this book was it took me straight back to all those times that I read Lord of the Rings and the Sword of Shannara and David Eddings and all that. It's really reminiscent of all of that stuff. It's got a very sort of playful, naive tone to it where, um, and then not only that, but it's got, since, uh, Kristen Britton is a, um, game warden, uh, and she fair, fairly admits that this is based off of her, uh, experience as a game warden especially in acadia national park so you kind of got to picture that um new england landscape when you're reading this you know like the adirondack mountains acadia national park you know the new hampshire vermont landscape and so um and then all not only that but she describes it in such lush detail she really takes the time to describe the flora and fauna bugs birds deer elk antelope whatever is in her forests she gives it a time to, you know, for the reader to really marinate in all of the sounds and sights of nature, which I can see why she would do that. Being a game warden, not a game warden, a park ranger. Did I call her a game warden? Park ranger. I might have to reshoot this video. We will edit this video out to say park ranger every time I say game warden. I swear to God we will. Anyway, Kristen Britton. Green Rider, if you want to, and, and not only that, this is this first book in a, in a series. I think there's six or seven in the series now. Another thing is she writes these things. Since she does have a full-time job as a park ranger, she, um, she only puts out about a book every three or four years. Kind of the same pace that I put my books out. So, you know, that's another thing we got in common. Anyway, I give this a good eight out of ten. Very good start to what I hope is going to be a great series that I'm going to love.